Hello hello audience, I wish you happiness and prosperity. Editor would like to welcome you for visiting and here is the official news. One, Kansas City wins a thriller over Baltimore to kick off the NFL season in the Chiefs' quest for Super Bowl III peak. The NFL's 105th season has begun. With the Kansas City Chiefs aiming for a historic Super Bowl III peak. In a thrilling opener at Arrowhead Stadium, the Chiefs defeated the Baltimore Ravens 27-20. Clinching the win on the final play. Patrick Mahomes set a franchise record for all-time passing yards, surpassing Len Dawson, while rookie Xavier Worthy scored both a rushing and receiving touchdown. The game featured a back-and-forth battle, with the Ravens closing the gap late in the fourth quarter. However, a potential game-tying touchdown pass was ruled incomplete after review, allowing the Chiefs to secure the victory. Mahomes completed 20 of 28 passes for 291 yards and a touchdown, while Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson threw for 273 yards and one touchdown. The game was briefly delayed due to a thunderstorm, but excitement returned as the season kicked off. 2. Jessica Pagula's breakthrough continues. Reaches first Grand Slam singles final at U.S. Open and will face Arena Sabalenka Jessica Pagula has reached her first Grand Slam singles final at the U.S. Open. Overcoming a set and a breakdown to defeat Karolina Muchova 1-6, 6-4, 6-2. At 30, Pagula is the oldest American woman in the Open era to make her Grand Slam final debut. She will face world number. 2. Arena Sabalenka, who defeated Emma Navarro in the other semifinal. Pagula, who had previously struggled in major tournaments, expressed her joy at reaching the final, especially in her home country. Sabalenka, returning to the final after losing last year, acknowledged the crowd's impact on her performance and is determined to improve this time around. 3. Soccer player injured after pretty hefty sneeze, Victor Adeboijo, a soccer player for Bolton Wanderers, has been sidelined with a back injury caused by a pretty hefty sneeze, according to his coach Ian Evett. The injury flared up after Adeboijo, who has been dealing with a back issue, sneezed on Monday. He missed a game against Barrow, and while scans are pending, there is hope that the injury is merely a cartilage or muscular problem. This unusual incident adds to a list of bizarre sports injuries, highlighting the challenges Bolton faces as they already contend with several other player absences. 4. Australian swimming coach fired for supporting Korean athlete during Paris Olympics Swimming Australia has terminated coach Michael Palfrey's contract after he expressed support for South Korean. Swimmer Kim Woo Min in the men's 400-meter freestyle at the Paris Olympics, where two Australian competitors also participated. Palfrey, who had previously advised Kim, stated he hoped Kim would win but also swim well. Swimming Australia cited a breach of his employment agreement, claiming his comments brought disrepute to both himself and the organization. Despite the termination, Palfrey will retain his coaching accreditation. Kim finished third in the race, while Australian swimmers placed second and fourth. Australian athlete Elijah Winnington downplayed the situation, stating Palfrey apologized and did not mean any harm. Australia's chef de mission, Anna Mears, noted that Palfrey made a serious error in judgment and acknowledged the impact of his comments. Palfrey has been coaching since 2010 and worked with several Australian swimmers at the Olympics. 5. China's men's soccer team faces fan backlash after humiliating loss to arch-rivals Japan China's men's soccer team suffered a humiliating 7-0 defeat to Japan in a World Cup qualifying match. 
marking a new low for a nation passionate about soccer but plagued by corruption and poor performance. The match, held in Saitama, featured goals from several Japanese players in top European leagues, including Wataru Endo and Kaoru Maitoma. The loss has sparked outrage among Chinese fans on social media, with many expressing their disappointment and calling for drastic changes to the team. This defeat is particularly painful due to the historical rivalry between China and Japan. China's soccer struggles have been compounded by recent corruption scandals, leading to the imprisonment of key officials. The national team, currently ranked 87th in the world, is set to face Saudi Arabia next. 6. U.S. soccer legend Alex Morgan announces retirement from the sport Alex Morgan, a renowned soccer star and prolific goalscorer, announced her retirement from professional soccer at the age of 35. In an emotional video, she revealed that her final match will be this weekend against the North Carolina Courage and shared the news of her pregnancy with her second child. Morgan reflected on her 30-year journey in soccer, expressing gratitude for the sport and her achievements, including being a two-time World Cup champion and an Olympic gold medalist. She emphasized the positive impact she has had on the next generation of players, noting her pride in her daughter's aspiration to become a soccer player. Highlighting the progress made in women's soccer. 7. Ugandan Olympian Rebecca Cheptegei dies after being set on fire by boyfriend Rebecca Cheptegei. A Ugandan marathon runner who recently competed in the Paris Olympics, has died after suffering severe burns from an attack by her boyfriend, Dixon Ndiyama. The Uganda Athletics Federation confirmed her death, expressing sorrow and condemning domestic violence. Chepta Guy, 33, was critically injured in an incident where Ndiyama allegedly doused her in petrol and set her on fire following a dispute. Despite her participation in the Olympics, where she finished 44th, she succumbed to her injuries after experiencing multi-organ failure. Her family criticized the Kenyan authorities for not acting on previous reports of Indiama's violent behavior. Cheptegei's death marks a tragic continuation of violence against female athletes in Kenya, following the murders of Agnes Tarop and Damaris Mutua in recent years. Kenyan officials have called for investigations and emphasized the need to combat gender-based violence. 8. Chuck Aoki, you can sometimes feel limited by your disability. But in wheelchair rugby, your wheelchair is an asset. Chuck Aoki, the most decorated wheelchair rugby player in U.S. history, expressed disappointment after the American team secured a silver medal at the Paralympics losing 48-41 to, to Japan. Despite this, he acknowledged the value of silver, reflecting on his journey since his first Paralympics in 2012, where the team won bronze. Followed by three consecutive silvers in 2016, 2021, and 2023. Aoki, who has used a wheelchair since age 12 due to hereditary sensory and autonomic neuropathy, emphasized how wheelchair rugby has empowered him, allowing him to feel athletic and free. Inspired by the documentary, Murderball, he pursued the sport despite initial concerns about his safety. Looking ahead, Aoki is excited for the 2028 Los Angeles Paralympics, hoping to win his first gold medal at home, and remains passionate about the sport as long as it continues to be enjoyable for him. Thank <laughs> you.